Hello, thank you for choosing this course. In this course, I'll be showing you two sites you can use to create your own website without having any programming or coding skills. However, if you have HTML, CSS, and JavaScript knowledge, that should be a bonus for you. However, with this course, you don't need to have any programming or coding skill. And also with this course, whilst creating your website, or after creating your website, you will get free domain and free hosting. However, you will not be able to customize the web address as you want it. Those sites will also add their own extension to your web address. However, you can decide to pay for the hosting. And then with that one, you can customize your web address. I'll be showing you all this in this course. And also after creating the website, I'll show you how you can monetize the website. That is how you can earn from your website. Basically, I'll be showing you Google AdSense. And then also you can include other ads. All you have to do is edit the HTML content of the website. And that is not difficult. I'll show you that also in this course. And also, I'll show you how to put your website on the search engine so that you can be ranked by Google. And that is Google search optimization or search engine optimization. And also how you can get Google Analytics for your website so that you can see how your viewers are communicating with your website. That is, you can see the number of viewers you are having to your visitors, you are having to your website, their location, and so on. You get all that information from the Google Analytics. I'll show you how you can include that to your site as well. And I'll be also giving you certain bonuses in this course. So basically, that is it. I hope to see you in the course. Bye. Okay, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, basically, you are going to create a SimDiff account. So with SimDiff, you get a free website as well as a free hosting. I mean, you can build a website for free and then they will super provide with free hosting. However, there's a disadvantage to that. Disadvantage is that after your website, and then you have to add .simdiff.com. So you cannot get your own customized web address. That's the disadvantage. And then they have... A subscription plan so you can pay for the professional one the that one you can remove the dot same diff.com and then for instance if you want your website to be your name.com you can have it as such other than that if you want to use the free plan then you have your website dot same diff.com that's how it's going to be and what the interface for creating the application i mean the website is very easy you just enter it and then you can publish your application easily. I mean, your website is in. So, if you have an account, you can click the login to login. You just enter your email address and your password. And then that is it, you log in. However, if you don't have an account, you have to go back to the home page and then you click on get started. Or start your site for free. So you can start your site for free in order to create an account. Then you enter your email and your password. And then you click on the register. So after entering your email address and selecting your password, you click on register. And then a confirmation email will be sent to your email address. So you have to click on that. On a link in the email in order to confirm your email address and that is it you can start to create your website so these are some of the features in the beginning it might look somehow complicated to you but as you get started you see it is very easy so you can just ignore this and then you can go ahead and start your designing start designing your website That is it for this section. I'll see you in the next lecture. Bye.
Okay, welcome back to this section. Next section, we are going to use Blogger. Now, Blogger is owned by Google, and then it was created by an American online content management system. So, in this section, we are going to use Blogger. So, you can go to blogger.com or you can search Blogger and click this link. It will lead you to blogger.com where you are going to create your blog. So, here we are assuming we don't have any blog, so we are going to create one. So usually you log in with your Google account. So if you have a Google account, you can create one. So if you don't have one, you can click here to create one. If you already have one, you can click here, then enter your email, and then continue with the login. So I'll pause the video here and log in, and then we'll continue from there. After entering your email and password, you click on the next. And basically select the title of your blog so you can enter a name to see whether it is available or not so this is the title that will be displayed at the top of your blog so for instance you want to enter a title like Let's try this and then next. So you will choose your address. Let's see. Yes, yeah, so well, it seems this address is available. So we can choose this and then next. Your name. So you can enter your name or the name you want to be displayed. Then can finish. You can decide to go through this. With this, only this for now. So basically, this is the interface where I'm going to create your blog. So this is your login. Then this is Google Apps. And now here the post. When you add post, you can click here to create a new post. Or you can click here for the statistics of your website. How many followers, how many posts, how many comments. And then here you are going to get, see the views. How many views you have gotten from your blog. And then the latest post will show here with the number of views you have gotten by it. And then other posts will be shown. And then the pages will be here. And then a comment. If a user comments on any of your posts, you see the comments here. And then the earnings when you integrate AdSense into your blog. So you see, you can create an AdSense account and then you will link it to your blog. We'll see all that in this section. And then you can create pages the home page, about us page, contact page. You can create all those. And now the layout. So we select the layout of your website, how you, how you want the website to be. So here at the sidebar at the top, you see the about me. So we can try it and see how it is. So just remember the address you you used. And then with the same div, you see that after creating your website, you, you add dot .com. With the blogger, you add dot blogspot.com. That is if you are using the free version. You can also pay for the premium version. I'll show you that also. So this is the the top side. So that's the sidebar. At the top, you see about me gadgets. So you see that is about me. You can visit the profile. And then at the bottom, you see blog icon. But I have not yet created any post. So the blog icon will not be as well as the labels. I will create a post. All those will appear. And then the report abuse also is there. And so at the top, you can search the blog. So that is the search button here, but there's nothing to search. And then also you have the header. This is it here. 
and then at the pages okay don't have any page cells so the next lecture will create some pages and then a page body of not yet created any post yet and then the footer that's where you see the attribution so this is basically the footer and now the thing you can decide to change the appearance here and then you select your own thing so this is the one I'm using now. You can decide to customize it. That is if you are familiar with uh, HTML. So you can click the, the drop down, the arrow, and then you click on edit HTML. So you can edit the HTML here. You can add some CSS from JavaScript as well. However, usually you don't add it here because sometimes it doesn't allow. So if you want to add some HTML or CSS, you go to the layout. And then where you want to add the HTML or CSS or the JavaScript, you click the add the gadget and then here you select HTML or JavaScript and then you enter the title and then you enter the code here. The code, for example, if you want to enter an HTML code, you start with the tag and then you enter it. Maybe if it is a heading, then you enter it. I don't know if this will be displayed because basically it is JavaScript that you usually add there. So we can save it. You can also go to the settings. Okay, it does the same. So let's refresh the page. Okay, so you see it here. That is the HTML code we just added. So that is the advantage of Blogger. With the same diff. With the same diff, you cannot edit any HTML. You cannot add any HTML to your website, but with the Blogger, you can add. You see, we just added a header tag in the Blogger, and it is displaying here. But I don't need it, so you can just delete it. So you just click on it, and then choose Remove. Like OK. And then you save it. Also, after adding the HTML or the JavaScript, you can decide to hide it. So when you click it, you don't want it to show. You can just click your show this with it, and then to hide, to hide it. So as it will be fully going to the thing. Okay, if you want to change it, there are some here. For example, if you want to use this color, or even with the previous one, you can just change the color. Then go to customize. And here you have it. The main new color. You can decide to change it, and then you come to the advanced. Yeah, so you can change it to the colors and then the font size and then here with the gadget also you can, be, you can choose each of the gadgets and then you make changes and so that is let's go back now the settings Yeah, that's the title. You can decide to change the title. And then the description. You have to give a description. And then if, it's a, if you have adult content on your website, you have to indicate it so you want users. And then if you want to require each confirmation before the user can visit it, that is 18 years and above, you include it. And then if you want your site to be visible to search on this also, you select the site. And um, this is the blog address. Okay, so you can set to change it if you want. However, you have to make sure the name is available. You are not changing it, so you just leave it. And then custom domain. So here you're going to set to buy a domain so that you remove the dot block spots. So that if you want to use your name, so then it should be your name.com, not your name.blogspot.com. So here yeah, also we can decide to buy. Let's buy a domain. Here yeah, to refer to the Google domain page where you can select the domain you want and then you can also check the price. Well, we are not yet buying any domain, so we can go back. I can decide to come and check it. So the dot com is twelve dollars per year if you want to using the same name you have there 
so .com is all on .net .org .xyz Not US is also to on So you can go through and select the one you want. And then you can decide to change the name. Let's see. And let's refresh it. And so it's the same price. So basically the domain that you are buying. And that is it. So it means they will be hosting the website for you. You only just have to buy the domain. That's all. Um, I think the list is twelve dollars per year. Yes. Okay, that's ten dollars per year. But the dot com should be better. So you can use the dot com, then you buy the domain. So let's go back to the the previous page and continue. This will be kind of, that's it. I'm gonna decide to create another new blog here. Okay, so that's it for this lecture. I'll see you in the next lecture. Bye. Okay, welcome back to this lecture. In this lecture, I'm basically I'm going to show you the interface of the Applicator 24. So at this side, the left side here, you have your information. So you can decide to create a new website. With the starter plan, you can create up to seven websites. You can create up to seven free starter sites on, your, on the same account. So with this same account, you can create up to seven sites and then you can toggle between each site that is if you want to edit something on the site so you have some arrows on the case another site you have some arrows to change from one website to another so you can create another site on this same account and so you can enter the name of the site you want to create here, and then you check if the name is available which is available then you apply and then you continue from there and then you have a list of your sites however you only have one site here so you can decide to create a new website now you can manage your email address as well. So for instance, if you want to change your email address, you can decide to change it here. However, after entering the new email address, you have to enter the same gift password before you can click on the apply. And you can also change the password as well. So the current password and the new password. And then it is better to have some characters and symbols on the password. So you have at least one number one uppercase letter one, one lower case letter and then some symbols but the characters must be at least six more then we can also check notifications yeah okay so these are for the same diff app you can download the application for the android and the ios devices for Android, you can find it on the Google Play Store, and for the iOS, you can find it on the Apple App Store. So you can go there and download the mobile version of the of this website. Then you can also have your personal data, so you can fill in your first name, your username, company address, city. Alright, it's not compulsory to fill it. Then in terms of service, you can go ahead and read. You can click this link to read the full version. And the privacy policy also. And you can have to change the language, then we log out. So that is it. So for this side, this is where you edit the website. You make changes to the website. For instance, here the home page, you can decide to edit the text here, and then you can decide to add a new page. For instance, here the contact page before you have added anything. So you can decide to add a new page. And then with this side, for instance, if you want to change certain things for example this page you want to move the contact app so you can move it up and the home page will be below it so it's basically to make changes to the modes to the sections so you can move this okay so that you make certain changes and here if you want to delete certain things for instance here you want to delete this topic page 
because currently we are not using it so we can delete it to write it and then we click here to go back to the mode and then you have to customize the graphics you want to make, want to make some changes you can select a header and you select a footer and then you make certain changes and then yeah, that, this is your settings so you can, yeah, you can check the number of visitors who are visiting your website so yeah 24 hours so in the last 24 hours how many visitors you have had those who browse to your site because who they not stay and then the pages that were read how many pages were read and then average number of pages viewed per user and then in the last seven days in the last five weeks so that is it you can also decide to change the site address so for instance for now this is the name of the website you can decide to use another name and then click here to check if the name is available if the name is available you can click on the apply to apply and also you can decide to purchase your own domain with your own name so it means you don't have to get added but simply to the name of the website again you want to the website address again you don't have to add it so you can just purchase the smart or pro site and then we apply also yeah so that is the upgrade so you can decide to upgrade so with the smart this is the price but this is in Ghana cities this one to be around 1.9 dollars yeah, to be around 1.9 US dollar for three years price of two special offer so this is per month so it's about 1.9 dollar per month and then with the pro this will be about two two dollars per month with the pro version so these are the payment methods so you can select the one you want to use to make the payment and then the written language this one i write in english so it's in english and you can have to edit the menu button all right so i don't want to edit it so you can leave it like that the menu button is on the size not on this editor so the author of the set for example if you have a new author so you can try to change the name and then we use the author's name and then yeah like i said we can include a link so that when the user clicks on your name in the website for instance here you are going to use the name here if you had included a link so the user would have been able to click here and then to refer the user to that link if i don't want to apply it so you can leave that one and go back and then the ownership verification you want to verify the owner of the website you can select the same so now if you want to use google search console for the bing webmaster and the index webmaster and then you select the service and then you can watch the tutorial if you know how to verify it and then you submit your site map for that if you choose google so this is it and then select the property you are so please do this your banner so that one uses from the european union who are using google analytics so, so let your to let the users know that your website uses cookies so whether they should accept so whether they accept the cookies or not so you can decide to display it and then you apply it so click on ok you have to publish the website in order to apply those changes we'll come back to this meta description and the rest later so you can click on publish now so let's continue with the two social media share buttons so you can enable this feature so that the buttons will appear on each picture allow users to share the content on the social media pages and then you apply so you have to publish the website to apply this new setting. So I'm not publish it now yet. Let's continue with this. And then the gallery thumbnails. So you have some images here already which you can use. Well, we are not ready to apply this, so you can go back. Then the SEO directory. So this one we have to upgrade to the smart or to the pro version before. 
to be able to set up this is what you have a number of pages you have seven with the smart 12 pages with the pro you can have 30 pages and then you can have virtual last pages and then blocks for the smart and the pro version for the setup version you don't get that and then optimization for search engines you can have the optimization assistant for all three have with the starter you don't get your websites in the same different SEO directory as well as the structured data however with all of them you can get some mini guides that is how to do videos and then frequently ask questions and then contextual tips and guides now if you want to use e-commerce solutions then you need to upgrade to the pro version so basically that is it you can check here and then you decide which one you want to use so you can buy your own domain you can click it to see their prices. I think we are fully seeing their prices. So you can decide to purchase in. So you can go back. Then with Google Adsense also, you have to purchase the pro before you get to use Google Adsense on the site. Then you can use Google Analytics after paying for the pro also. And then if you want to remove the mid with diff, this is this. The mid with diff. If you want to remove it, then you have to also pay for the smart or the pro version. The Wi Fi using the free version to be there. And then duplicate for translation. Okay, with this one, so you have to upgrade to the pro. Now you can duplicate your site for translation. Then with the e-commerce solution for reason that you have to upgrade to the pro version before you can use it and then the password protection now you have to upgrade to the pro for example if you want to post content for only specific users who have a certain password so after creating the content then you set a password for it so that only users who have the password can get access to that content this is what it is about so for that one you have to upgrade to the version before you can do that then to download this site also so you can back up your websites for that one also you have to upgrade to the pro and then google conversion tracking also you have to upgrade to the pro before and then you can decide to publish or release the website if you take no longer like the website you can unpublish it and that is it that is for this lecture i'll see you in the next lecture welcome back to this lecture now let's look at some basic settings in an ad so the header and the footer so let's add the header so we already have an active header but we can decide to use an image rather so you can also choose the layout of the page the selected one is okay then with the header we can just change the image you can go to one splash and then you search for an image so the header is going to go there so i'm going to the footer okay there's no footer so you can choose an image or you can go to one splash and get one So let's see if we have an image. Let's see if you can use the same image.
it will select only this and let's apply so we'll see it at the end of the okay so that's it here so that's the footer and so we can add more let's see the colors we want to change the colors of the page so this is the default one this is the one we selected when creating the site you can just have to change it and then use this oh yeah let's change it to this and then we apply now we have to publish it to our website for the changes to be effective we also decide to add a logo so we can use an image so what is the only image i have so i'll just use the it cannot get the full image so let's forget about the logo for now we we'll create one later so now the font you guys have to change the font for the site so these are some of the fonts you have you just have to select one so let's select this and apply So the first one was even better. So let's go back to the first one. Well, in order to use these other fonts, we have to go to the spot or to the pro version before. So we just apply this. Now with the shapes and change it's about this side how you want it to be so you can change and choose the one you want then select the one you prefer so you can select the first one or the second one I'm not going to change now. So you can select the one you want and then you click on apply. And then with this one, in order to change it, you have to upgrade to the smart or to the pro version before. So you can change it. So you leave it. And then with the texture, that one also you can enable it. So let's see how it will look like. Then we select this or that. And then you apply. In order to use other textures, you have to upgrade. And then the strip. See, this is the default one. So let's change to this one. Then let's change to dark. So light. Okay, so that's at the top here. And let's publish it. And then let's view. Okay, so this is it. So you can also click here to add some text at the bottom of the page. Then to open this text editor so that I can add some text. So that is it. Okay, so thank you. That's it for this lecture. I'll see you in the next lecture. Okay, welcome back to this lecture. So after creating our same different accounts, this is the page when we log in to bring us to. 
so we'll just click on start so you are now going to start creating your website so the first to your home page topic page and then blog page you can decide to add this you can add an about us page starting point so let's produce you would like to start with this can be real and edited and removed at any time so for now i'm going to select page you want to start with however you can decide to for instance you want to add an about us page you can decide not to add it now you can add it later it doesn't matter you just have to start with some pages so let's just click on apply however any change you make here will not be applied to the website unless you click on publish it will just be applied it will just be saved here when you click on the apply however if you want it to be published on the website then you have to click on publish so for now any change you make here it will just be applied it will not be published on the website yet so now you can select the theme you want now just selecting and then click on apply So now you can give title to your website. So you can just give it any name you want. I think of any title. So in order to give a title, you just click on the title of this website and then to open the text editor where you enter the text. So here, and then you enter the title of the website you want. So let's see. And then you select the color of the title and then you select the size so in order for users to find you then you have to select your company's name or your company's activity so yeah let me just use my name You can click here to learn more about SEO, that is search engine optimization. So this will also help in your search engine optimization. That is so that your website will be ranked higher in Google search results. So we we'll just choose the title and then you we'll apply it. Now you can now let me give the description. What is this site about so we can click on it and then you enter the text so this will be the text of the home page you have to list for that Google type in the Google so all these are for search engine optimization so that when a user searches on Google your website will be on top of the list So you have to use Google type into the search engines to find the content of your web page. So here yeah, let's see. And then after entering the text, we click on apply. Now you can decide to publish. So let's click on the publish. And before publishing, you have to confirm your email address and agree to the terms of service. And then give your website a name or an address. And then you have to give you the name of the author of this site. And these are optimization assistants to help your website rank higher in Google search results. So we'll do this in the next lecture. So that's it for this lecture. I'll see you in the next lecture. Okay, welcome back to this lecture. In this lecture, we're going to change a few things in the settings. For instance, with the title, we can leave it at, but we don't have a description. We have to add a description as in what the blog is about.
So even though you have an about us page, you can also include the description. Usually the, the description will be somewhere here beneath the title. So we have the description here. So let's copy the about us, the about us page from the same div site. So let's take this one. Only only piece up to 500 characters. Okay, this is just 337. It means you can add more. But right, let's just limit and see if. So that's the description. Now there's no adult content, so we can leave this one. Now with the Google Analytics property ID, I'll show you that one in another section. Maybe in the next session. As well as the Google Search Console. For, the, for now, you have enabled it to be visible to search engines. However, you have to use certain optimization to optimize it so that it will be in the search engine results. I'll show you that one also in the next section. This one, the icon, for instance, you want to change the blog icon, so you can select your own icon. If you have one, if you don't have one, you can just leave it and then to using the blog icon. So you know for choosing, so you can choose file. Okay, the image is not a square image, so you can use it. So you can only use a square image. The image I just chose was a, a rectangle. So you can leave it, or if you have an image, you can use it. So you just cancel. And now the blog is you can decide to invite other people. So for instance, you you are the admin. You can decide to invite more people. Let's cancel. And then pending author invite. If you invite other people, it will be it will be showing here until unless they, they accept the invitation. You see that they will be pending here. And you can decide to invite more authors. So you can just write the email of the person you want to invite and then you send them the link. I mean an email will be sent to them. So they can just click the link in that email. To accept the invitation and then they can also publish on the blog however you can come to the blog admins and authors so this is where you select so that in case you add other people whether you want to give them admin privileges or not but now if you want to yet add anyone so you cannot change it the way if you add someone you can change so that the person will only be an author the person cannot change the settings what the person can only do is create new posts for the blog however with the admin you have all the privileges Then the reader has said you can make it public or only private to authors or custom readers. Now it is public, so everyone can see it. So you can just cancel it. And then the maximum number of posts to be shown on the, on the main page. Right now, if not just created any posts, but we will create more than seven posts, only seven will be showing on the main page. So you have to click on read more to move to the next page to see the other posts. And then post templates. And then with the comment, you have already checked that. This is the comment form message. You can also decide to post using your email. So you don't have to log into the site. And then when you post to so here, this is your email. And then you can add some secret words so that you, when, you are, when you want to post to their blog, you just post to that email. So you can decide to publish it immediately. So I mean, immediately you send the email to post to their blogger, or you can set to save the email as a draft post so that when you come back, then you publish it. Right now, you can disable it. And the reason why you have to use a secret word here is because other people might have your email so they can just go and then enter your email at blogger.com and then after sending the email to come to be published on your blog 
So here, if you use a secret word where no one else knows, or any secret number where no one knows, and then you publish it, it will be published on the blog. Or for safety reasons, you can just save the email as a draft post. So that when you log into Blogger, then you can make the corrections and then you save it. Or if you're not the one who made that post, then you can just cancel it or delete it. So for now, we'll just disable it. And then comment notification. So when someone comments on the on your blog, they will send you a notification. You can also email post to others. And then your time zone, you can change it. Then the date header format you can also decide to change it and then the meta tags that one is also for the search engine optimization so you have to add a description and then error and redirect so in case you have visited i'm sure you have visited a website before and then you see something like 404 maybe the website is not available or something like that so you can enter a link that it will redirect the person to so in case the user goes there so yeah for instance in case there's an error on our blog to refer the user to the main page so just enter this main page here and then you save it so this is going to be so it's going to be from this to this so for instance if you've identified an error on your blog maybe there's an error in the url so this is the form so this is this is where you enter the url where the error is and then it will refer the user to this page and then you can save it so when there's an error message so uh, for instance when there's a 404 error this is where you enter the message to be displayed to the user radar Now you can decide to enable custom robots.txt but in this is not going to do that. So this is the Google Search Console. So you can click there. So in the next section, I'm going to talk about the Google Search Console. And now you want to for the monetization, you want to enable custom as.txt. You can do that later. Okay, so now this is it. And also in the pages. I added an image to the about us. I copied the image from the same dev site from here. And then I added the image. So that is it. So you can refresh our page and then you'll see the description we added earlier. So this, will, this is the description we added earlier. So that is it. Okay, so basically that is for this section. I'll see you in the next section. Right. Okay, welcome back to this lecture. In this lecture, basically, I'm going to create pages for our blog. So, after logging in on the left section here, and click on pages. So, I'm going to create the home page. The home page is usually default. The default page the user sees when the user goes to your website straight away. So now I'm just, going to, I'm just going to create a contact us page and about us page. So after clicking on pages on the top left corner here, you see add new page. So you can click there. And then you can write about us. And then you write the text here, but I'm going to copy the text from the same div. So go to the about us page. I'm 
and copy everything. I also copy the home page also, so let's go to the home page. So I'm copying the water as we paste it here. This text also and add it. Okay, so that is it. As I'm copying it, it has been copied together with the link. So you can click here to see the link. So that is the link. However, if the link hadn't been added, you can just select the text you want to add the link and then you click here and set or edit the link. Okay, so let me explain this section. So here, if you want to enter the text, this is where you click to enter the text. But if you also have some HTML knowledge, you can also click here and then select HTML view. So this is where you enter your HTML code. So you come to compose view and then you enter your text here. Now this, if you click this arrow to undo something you just recently did, then this is redo. Now this is where you select the font type. So you select the one you want. And then this is where you select the font size. You see this is too small. So let's select it and then change the font size to medium. And now the normal side is whether this is a paragraph or this is a heading. So you, know, you see you can select a major heading and then heading, subheading. So you can leave it as a normal paragraph. And now if you want to make a text bold, you just select the text and then you click here to make it bold. If you want to underline it, then this is what you use. If you want to make it italics, then you select this also. Now if you want to color the text, let's change the color of the text. You select the A here. And then you select the color of the text. And then if you want to cancel the text, then you select here, then to create a line through the text now for the explanation this is when you want to add a link to the text so you click on it and then you paste the link you want to add and then you can decide to open this link in a new window but i'm not adding any link so you can cancel that now this is if you want to add an image so you can click on the set image and then you upload from your computer from photos the photos will link it will go to your uh, Google Photos account and then to upload from there. Or if you already uploaded a picture to the blogger, you to pick it from there. Or if you want to add a picture by URL, so for instance, you'll go to Google and search for a certain picture, and then you copy the picture's URL. So you click here and then you paste the picture's URL. And so if you want to add a video, you can also upload from your computer or from YouTube. So from the YouTube, you just copy the video's YouTube link and then you post it. Or you can just search for the video when it appears and then you select it and you upload it. I will not put any video, so you can cancel that. So no videos. So you can click on the search, and then you search for the YouTube video. Then you click here, and the video appears. You select it, and then you choose select. I am not add any video, so you can cancel that one for now. And this is if you want to add some special characters. You click here, and then you select the one you want to add. I'm adding any so you close it. Now this is for more info. So this one, if you want the text to be aligned, the alignment. So this is align left, this is center, this is right, and then this is justified. And then also the indentation. I want to indent the text. And then this is if you are creating a list. So this will be numbered this for instance, the list we created here. You can use this to make it a numbered list. Or use this to make it. So this is rather numbered list, and this is on ordered list. Now this is for quotation. For instance, if you are quoting something, so let's say we are quoting this. So we select it and then we select the quotes. 
to, to put that text. And this is if you want to insert a jump break. So if you want to translate the text, you can use that. You can use this translate. So basically, that is it. So now we finish creating the about us page, but we don't want to quote this. So you can just click on the undo. That's it. After that, when you're done, you can click publish or you can preview it to see how it will look like. And then when you want to allow users to comment, you can choose to allow. And then you can choose do not allow. So and then you publish. Click on confirm. So now the page will be published. Now you can add another page. That's the contact us page. Then we enter your text. So let me look for a text to enter. Okay, so I just entered this text. So for the contact us page. So for instance, here you can see it is a link. So you just write the email and then the URL to link to. Then you enter your email there. Then you click on apply. Okay, let's check the advance. Yeah, you can do it. And then if you want to remove the link, you can click here to remove the link. And also the email. So after writing the email, you also made it a link. So when the user clicks it to refer the user to our email. So now let's change. Let's also add a link here. So that when the user clicks on it, to open the website. So this is the contact us page. So when the user clicks on it, to refer the user to the home page rather. So you can click insert link. And then here you paste the link of the blog. Or where you want to refer the user, and then you can apply. So let's change, let's add an S. The difference between the HTTP and then the HTTPS is the one with the S is more secure, or the browser thinks that one is more secure than the one without the S. So we apply. Then you can decide to publish it. You can also use a contact form. So after adding these pages, you can go to the layout. So for now, the pages will not be showing. For instance, if you go to the site, the pages will not be showing. You have to set the pages to show. You see that. When you come to the layout. And then you scroll down to page list top and then you select it. So now it is not showing, so you can decide to show. So you can show this widget and then we select it. Now this is the default one, the home page. That is the first page. And then you can add the S. You can decide to edit it. Add an S. However, even if you don't add the S, it will automatically be added when the user visits the page. You just have to add a new item. And then you can enter the about us. And then automatically to add the link, the page URL. And then you save. And then you add the other one, the contact us. Automatically add it, and then you save it. And then you save item. That is, and then you, now you can save everything here. I decided to add a contact form. This is a contact form. And then you save it. And then you can drag it to where you want it to be. So, for instance, let's drag it to the page body. Or even after the page body. So we drag it here and then we save it. Because now you can refresh the page.
Okay, so this is the contact form. And then by default, the home page is the place page the user sees. So this is still the home page. And then we can click the about us. This is the about us page. And then the contact form will still be showing on every page because you placed it in the page body. So it will still be showing everywhere. And then we are coming to the contact us. And then when we click on this link to open the same blog again. Now if you want to send an email, click on it. And then you open mail. So you see here uh, open mail. Now you open it and then you send the mail. The same as this. Open mail and then you send the mail. Now, in order to make a comment, you have to log in to Google. You can decide to change that. So let's go to comments. So for the comment section, you see the comments on the blog. But if you want to change users who can comment, you have to go to settings. And then you scroll down to where you see comments. Okay, so here comments location embedded. So now who can comment? This one users with Google account. So before someone can comment, the person must have a Google account and the person must log in before the person can comment. So you can also choose only members of this blog. So only those who have subscribed to the blog can comment. You can choose anyone. But after choosing anyone, it means anyone at all can comment. Even bots can be used to comment on their blog. So it is somehow better to choose users with Google accounts. So the user will log in and then comment. And then you save it. Or you can try to choose anyone at all. And then you save it. So that is we have created two pages. We can also add the privacy policy page. That is if you collect user information, you can add a privacy policy page. Then that one you can create it yourself, or you can go to Google and search for other sites that create privacy policy. So let's try. Uh, so you can search for privacy policy generator, and then you have some here. You see free privacy policy generator, so you can click on it, then to generate the privacy policy for you. Let's ask for some information like the website's name and then we click generate privacy policy. Okay, so Jake, are you creating a privacy policy for a website, mobile application, or field application? So you choose websites and then you add the URL of the website. Let's add the HTTPS. And then next. You want to use American English spelling or the British English? You can choose any. Now, do you have users in the European Union? You don't know where users will be coming from, so of course, you can just choose yes. Then, yes. Then, next. Can you create an account or register with your website? Okay, with our website here, users do not create accounts or register, so you can choose no. However, if you just create an account or register on your website, then for that one, you have to choose yes. You don't need any user age. Any user can access the website, so you choose no for that. And then the information you collect on your website. That you collect names, phone numbers, email addresses, email addresses, job titles, 
notification so we don't collect any information all right if you don't choose anything you cannot move to the next okay you can move you collect some information no so next and there is actually no register so you choose no Okay, for this one, you might use Google Analytics, so you have to choose yes for that. So, if you are using tracking and analytics services, that is Google Analytics. I like you to collect and let you data. So, that one, yes. So, perhaps you collect receipt data and then device data as well as location. No. And then you move to the next. On this site they, they ask so many questions you can use another one which doesn't ask so many questions they just ask you some few questions and then they automatically generate it for you so let's see okay let's try this one So you can click yes yeah, create your privacy policy today and then we are creating for the website so next then the website you are we paste it and then the name of the website just one available for now let's choose a different one So basically, you can come to Google and then you select anyone and then you create it. However, I don't want to create one for this site for now. So you can still continue with the first one. However, I don't need it for now, so I'll leave it. So that is for this lecture. I'll see you in the next lecture. Bye. Okay, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we are going to add a user profile so you can go to the settings and then if you have not saved any changes you have to save it otherwise the changes will be lost you can just click on the settings and then you scroll down to where you see user profile okay so you can see user profile here in the general section so just click on user profile and then to refer you to the user profile page where you can edit the profile then you can decide to share your profile And if you don't share it, it will not be shown on your website. Then you can set to show your email address as well, so that Google can contact you through your email address. Then you can decide to show certain blocks that will appear on your profile. So you can click and then you add the blocks and then you can save settings. You can back go back to edit the profile. You can also decide to show sites you follow on your profile. And then this is your username, that is your email address, and then also your email address as well, and then your display name. You can decide to change the name. And then if you want to add a profile photo, you can add it. So you can just choose a profile photo and then you add it. You can also decide to add an audio clip. I right? that one you just you need to put the URL here, and then you can select your gender, and then select your home page, and then here yeah, you can give the location.
that is your location and then here your job your work can just select from this list and then you enter your interest and then introduce yourself write your favorite movies favorite music favorite book and then random question and then you save profile that is how you edit the user profile so that is it for this lecture see you in the next lecture Okay, welcome back to this lecture. We are continuing from where we left off in the last lecture. So in order to agree to the terms of service, we just click here. And then you can click here to read the full version of the terms of service. And then you click on I have read and agree to the terms of service and then you accept. And now to go to the next step, you can just click on the publish again. Then you see give your website a name or an address. Then you can click there and then you select the name you want to give to your site. As I explained earlier, yeah, you see, because I'm using the free version, so dot will be added to the name you give to your website. And if you pay for the free subscription, I mean, if you pay for the premium subscription, then the dot will not be there. So you can just give the name of your website dot com without the dot so yeah, let's just use my name. Then check if the name is available. Okay, so this name is available, so we can use it. Okay, so we just click on apply. You can also purchase to or transfer your own domain name and use it with any startup. So you can just apply. So if you want to change the domain name, you can click here to check the guide for changing the domain name. After that, we click on apply. So this setting name has been saved. Okay. So you go to the next step. So here to confirm your email address, you, you go and check your email. A confirmation email will be sent to you after creating the same diff account. And then you have to click the link in the email in order to verify your account. So that is it so that you confirm your email address. Now you have to give the name of the author of the site. So here you enter your name. Who we'll designed the site? You enter your name and then you can decide to display your signature at the bottom of the site. Just after entering your name, then you can add it here. And then add a link to the signature. You can decide to add a link to the signature as well. So that when a user clicks on the link to refer the user to another site, the site you want. So you can enter the site here. The name, I mean the web address here and then when a user clicks on your name or well, that is your signature so when a user clicks on it to refer the user to that site then you can just decide to enter your name and then you apply and then you can choose a name for a tab so that is one page. You can leave it like that. One page. So you can make use of the editors above. Justify left. Then this is center, and then this is right. And then you can. This, this I have to make it very short and descriptive. And then after that, you apply. However, it is not compulsory to fill this before you can publish your site. These are the main ones. So let's confirm our email address and then we can publish it. So you click on the confirm your email address. Now this email is not yet verified. So please send me an email to verify this address. We can decide to use a different one. So you go to your email and click on the verification link.
okay so you go to your email and then you click on the link so i've copied all the link and then i'm pasting the link here that is the verification complete your email has been verified please log in so you go back and then you click down so you log in again it will automatically log you in and then you continue from there so now you can click on the publish and then you can come and show this later so you can go to publish now now you can view your site and it's not currently published so you go back publish and then select publish now so that is it here if not yet added any content so this is what will be displayed So we'll come back and add more content here. So that is it for this lecture. I'll see you in the next lecture. Okay, welcome back to this lecture. In the previous lecture, I forgot to show you the how to check the preview of the site. So you can click here the eye to check how the site will look like. So basically, this is the only thing we have on the site for now. So this link will allow the users to share the, this content on their Facebook page, their Twitter page, their Google Plus page, their Pinterest page, and then here you can add more. And then you can click the second image here, that is the mobile phone, to check how the sets will look like on the mobile phone. So yeah, this is how the sets will look like on the mobile phone. And then you can click the pencil to go back to the previous. So now let's complete the optimization checklist so you can give a meta description to describe the content of this page yeah, you can click so that is it here the you can click on it now i give the description here This is it. Then go to the chat bar. Okay, so that is the first page. So you give the description. Basically, you cannot add a lot of text. So this is the only few text you can add. And as if you want to add more. See, so this is the end. As I'm trying to enter more text, I'm unable to enter the text. So this is the only so you can only enter a few text here, and then that is it. You can also click here to check. So the first one the city card is visible in Google Result. It is often what they read before they visit the website. So it seems you can only enter up to 160 characters. So that is it. So you click on the apply. And now here you can enter the keywords. So we click here and then open the text editor and then we enter the keywords. And we would prefer to find the keywords inside of text, but if you want to indicate specific ones, separate them by a comma. So you can also enter that and then we click on apply. Okay, so this is what I add for now. I'll change this later. So after entering that, we just click on apply. And then we apply this to the site. And then click here to continue with the checklist. So now if I added a meta description, now yeah, there's an empty block to you have to write some content for every day. So I'll erase this block. So you go ahead and then that is the first block here, the home page. So you have to add something there. So we're gonna to decide to choose an image. So let me see if I have an image.
Okay, I think I have one image here. So let me just select this. So I can set to rotate the image. You can set to rotate right, rotate left. You can flip it horizontally. Then you can also flip it vertically. We can come to the on splash. So we can go and search for a free image with on splash. So well, well, let's just use this one. Then we apply. Okay, I'm going to describe this image. You can choose to show the description or not. They will choose to show the description. They will just see the description of the image. I will for Google search results. You have to include a description to the image. So let's let's see. Apply so that is you have one image here, and now you have, you have to give a title for this block. So let's click here, then you give a title. So you can make the title bold, you can italize it. Can align it to the left, align it to the center, align it to the right, include a link. This is better to include a link. For that is it, and then give the title. So let's assume the title is online courses. So you just write that. And then you can make it bold. You can select it and make it bold. And then align it to the center. Then can apply it. I can decide to publish it to the site. Then you publish now. I can decide to reload this page to view the changes you have made. So you see, after adding the cookies. Instruction you see here, set to use cookies to offer a better browsing experience. So you can choose OK or okay, click to find out more about how we use the cookies. So that is it. And now the image we just added is being displayed here. And now the online course is also being displayed here. Now you can add more text here. So you have to tell visitors what this blog is about. So you can click there in order to enter your text. So uh, there are more editing you can do. You edit, for this one, you can enter a bullet list. For this one, for a numbering list. And this one, for title. Okay, so basically, I added this text. So uh, and check and then you use the number list to do this you can just select all and then you click here to remove it and then you can click here and then the bring your numbers back so after entering your text here you apply or you can use this to include a link for instance you want to say let's choose convenient and then you want to include the link so you enter the link here and then you choose whether the link should open the same window or open in a new window. It's better to select here so that the link will open a new window so that the user does not lose your page. So you will just open the, a new page for the user so the user can close that page and return to your page. Then you can make the link also internal. So if the link is internal, it means it leads to another section in your in the same website 
so for example you have a page here a home page so the link will lead the user to the contact page or something like that and then you can if it is an email so you can just enter your email address here or any email address here when the user clicks on it it will refer the user to the person's email so that the person will send an email or a phone number so you can enter with the country code so you start with the plus and then when the user clicks on it to move the user to send a message however i'm not including this so you can just cancel it but however after doing this, you can just click on the apply and then continue so that is it we are not including any link here so we apply and that's it it has been applied here so here the contact page okay you can decide to publish it before adding the contact page so publish now okay let, let's end this lecture here so we'll see you in the next lecture okay welcome back to this lecture so in this lecture i'm going to continue with the optimization checklist so as you can click here and you have to link one of our pages we just have to create another page before we can link so let's okay we already have the contact page so here we can we just to another page so we can click here now it should link to the contact page then we apply it so that, that is it so the next link to one of your pages so here you should link back to the home page okay this is still the contact page so you can decide to link it to the contact page or we have to create another page so we are going to create an about us page but we'll do that later now so there's an empty block so we have to write some content today i'm sure that's the contact page yeah that's the contact page so contact us so we have i said you contact by email You also decided to enable a chat feature. Add the chat feature on your phone to reply to messages from the visitors. You can also add a new block here. However, let's let's change the title here. We can also name it as contact as it doesn't matter. Or contact me. Let's just use contact as. Then we can center it. And if you make it bold. And italize it okay and then we apply and now let's add some content some contents here so you can click here and then let me pause it and write something okay, so you just add a few text so for more information and queries you can reach out to us to this contact form so that is it and then you apply and we can publish it and then publish now you can try to view the website or the full user details so you can just review this page the previous text we entered is now here and then contact us so this is the link we created so you can click here and then to refer to the contact page so you can click the one here but some that is for the optimization checklist i think we are done until this review I'm going to write an exposition checklist. Then we can create an about us page. Yes, we can decide to add a new page. So we can click to add a new page. And you select 
how you wanted the pitch to be. So here should be an about us page. So you're gonna set an you're gonna set to choose an empty page and then you design it in the way you want and then you're gonna decide to choose the whole page with a big header and short description and then two invitation blocks and then you can add an about us page so let's just choose about us and then decide to include a gallery page where you just post pictures and you can also try to use a blog page so you can apply you select the one you want to write and then you apply so here yeah, about us now you can give a title you can just use the same title here yeah, about us and then here yeah, you write the contents you want to display so the contact page has finished loading so this is what the user will see for more information and queries you can reach out to us through this contact form so the user will just enter the email address and then the subject of the message and then the message and then in order to verify the user will have to click on the robot and then complete the verification before the user can send before the user can send the message and so here the chart the user enter the name and then the text and then we so will just click on this chart. That is it. We only have to click this here. Now I want to add the about us page. So I can come back to the creator. Now I'll pause this video and add some little text. Okay, so I just added I just added a few text. So here yeah, the web and I mean the title I choose about this site. That's what I chose as the title and then I made it bold. I chose italic and then center align and then I applied. And now the content of the about us page. Let's watch this text. So now here with the Udemy I can set to add a link to the Udemy website. So for instance, then you paste the link here and then open in a new window and then we apply it and now with the bit decree that one also we can include a link. Here and then pin a new window, then we apply that one also. Then so we just add some text here and then we apply. So we can include an image here and then publish. It's a missing image, so choose an image to illustrate, to illustrate your content and then the invitation block link to one of the pages. You can decide to ignore it and then it's still publish. However, let's correct it. So let's see if we have another image. We can go to one splash and then get a free image. I cannot have any image to use, so let's go to one splash and look for. Yeah, we are going to search for an image. Let's see what the it is about. Okay, let me see whether I can get an image. 
Okay, so let's use the on splash. So we just click here. Then we'll go to on splash and then we we'll enter a text like online courses. And then we we'll search. And then we we'll get some images. So we can just select in. So let's, let's choose this. And then that's online and then select. And I can decide to crop the image. I can decide to rotate it. Yeah, we can decide to rotate right, rotate left, rotate horizontal, and here, yeah, rotate vertical. And at the image description, you can decide to show it or not. Then we give a description. And then we apply it. Now, what was the next thing? Okay, to link to one of our pages. So let's provide a link here. So then we should link to the home page and then we apply and then the home page was linking to the contact page twice so we have to change that and then we make one okay so let's make the first one the link to the about us page and then the second one will link to the contact us page and now let's publish this choose an email okay with the contact page so we have to choose to link to another page so this is about us person to link to the home page yes and now everything is okay so now we can publish now and now we can go and view our site okay so this is the exact page we can go to the home page. And now that is it here. And now you can click here to visit the about this site and then click here to view the contact us. So you can click here. And then this is the about us page. You can decide to change the position so that the about us page will be on top of the home page should be down for that one you can come here and then we'll use the arrows to change it if i want to leave it like that so you can leave it so basically that is that let's see Okay, so you can make more changes and then you can include more blocks here for instance want to add a new page let's assume you want to add a new page so you click on it and then add empty page apply so give a name to this page and then add a new block we have to give a new name and now we want it to be text only or we want to add an image a small image to the left then the text will be on the right or a small image to the right and then the text will be on the left we just want to include the gallery where you just upload the pictures or you want an image to take the whole page can choose that and I will special this one you can include a video by a map let me just go to another page so here yeah, you include a map a video now in order to include the call to action button you have to upgrade to the smart or to the pro version and then you can also add the social media buttons so that the user can click and then to refer the user to your social media page as well I can view the blog.
to so in order to include the blog you have to use the blog page so you can go back and create a new one but for the e-commerce also you have to upgrade to the pro version before you can use the e-commerce and include the buy now button so you can go back and then add a new blog can also decide to delete it if you don't need it so you click here and then the delete empty page we can decide to add a new page then select a block page so now what is this blog about and then you can add a new blog here add a new blog here we can give a title to this blog and tell the users what this blog is about add a new blog and yeah, can select a blog so Yeah, so basically that is it so that's it for this section i'll see you in the next section bye okay welcome back to this lecture now with the same diff you cannot get the google analytics code for it you cannot integrate it with google analytics neither can you do that with the google search console however they provide you with an option they give you a checklist for the Google search optimization. I mean, for the search engine optimization. But I think we have already completed that in the previous lectures. That is adding a description and so on. So here you see that we have completed every item in the optimization checklist so that is it that is it for the search engine optimization what we did with the google search console that is it we are finished with it however with the google analytics you cannot do that i think you go to the in order to see the issues the page is getting you come to the settings and i think google analytics this is it so okay in order to use the google analytics then you have to upgrade to the smart version or the pro version and then after adding the sites as we did earlier and then you paste the identification code here and then that is it for the google analytics and then also they have a google okay this is google adsense that is for advertising the number of visitors so the google analytics this is what you can use per 24 hours per seven days per five weeks you see the pages are read by these people and then the rest so the visitors so you can check seven days you will see during the last seven days then you can also check that of five weeks you will see during the last five weeks so basically that is it so that is the certain optimization and then the analytics for the same diff website and also one thing you should note about the same diff is that the webs you cannot have the blog forever let me show you the list of your sites you see the, the site expires it will expire after you place it on the seat so it will expire after six months that is one disadvantage of it. However, with the blogger, it is there until you decide to delete it. So, if in case you don't want to use the blogger again, you can just decide to delete it or just leave it. You can just ignore it.
However, with the same if the site will expire after about six months. So that is it for this lecture. Bye. Okay, welcome to this section. So now in this section, we are going to use Google, the Google Search Console. So for that, you have to enable the site to be visible to the search engines. So allow search engines to find your blog. So you select the site. And then you can go and search for Google Search Console, or you can find it within the settings here. Google Search Console here. And then you can click on it. And then after clicking on it, you have to sign in. So you sign in whether you want to use accounts, but I already have a Google Search Console account, so I want to use the same account. So I'll set to use another account. So you log in. So you can go and search Google Search Console. And then this is the link search.google.com. So you can just click on it then you sign it so after clicking on it yeah you come in and then the domain you select the domain that is if you want to index the whole website you see all you are to so all URLs across all subdomains so you see then you have to verify you have to verify that you are the owner of that site and you also you have the url prefix so it means you really want to select certain url So yeah, you can just enter the name, I mean the web ad the site address and then you continue. So you don't have to add the HTTPS, you only add the 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 rest, and then you click on continue. So now they will check it for verification whether you are the owner of the site. Or you can decide to use the same account. For now, I'm using a different account. That is why. So maybe I should use the same account. Or you can just have to copy the TXT report below into the DNS confirmation for ever with the blogger.com. We don't need this. So let's just go back. I'll log out of this account and then I'll use the other account. Or you can decide to choose verify later. Okay, so after logging in, you just enter the address here without the HTTPS. And well, let me see whether I can verify it without that. Okay, no properties detected. So back. So now you enter the address here. And well, you don't have to include the HTTPS. And you have to remove the slash also and then you continue. So checking for verification. Okay, so ownership auto verified because it is the same account. Because it's the same account used by for the blogger and then the same account for the Google Search Console. So it's verified automatically. So we're done. We can go to property. So this is how it is. So after creating some posts, and then when reviewing some posts, you start to see the performance here. So you can click on start. However, you have to add some sitemaps. The sitemap is the 
it's like a map under which all the URLs on your site can be located. So welcome to Search Console. Yeah, you have to submit a site map. So this will be the site map URL. So let me show you how to create a site map. You add the address of your blog. So starting with the HTTPS, and then after the dot com, then slash the include site map dot XML, and then you submit it. Yeah, so that's map submitted successfully. And so that is it. And when there's one error, you see after immediately when submitting the site map, you see an error mixing XML tag. Yeah, so you have to add the tag and submit it. So after submitting the URL, you wait for some time before the performance and the address will be available. But now we don't really have any post on our blog. So let's create one post. Let's go to post. Okay, I, I open it. Okay, so initially I opened a different blog. So now we we'll come back to this blog and then we'll go to post and then select creating post. Let me just copy some text from the same div sites. Let me just copy all this. Then the text will name it maybe online courses. And now let's change the font size to let's say million. Now we can add an image on the top. You can add some settings to the image so the alternative text let's see let's name it image and then this should be a title text and the size you can make it you can change the size or can leave it at the original size you know the alternative text is for instance for some old browsers they are unable to display the image so to rather write an image with a certain small icon there so that is it and then you update it so that is it and now the labels are like tags like hashtags on the website so you can decide to add a label but for now, we are not adding any label, so you can just leave it. And then this is the, the permalink. So to show you the link, the website link, so this is the link. But you can decide to change it to custom link. And then you enter your link here. But you can try to use the auto permalink. So we'll just use it. Now you can change the date and time of publishing. For instance, this is to this date. I can decide to change it to maybe the following day. So you post on the following day at this time. I can decide to post on the same day. And then change the time. Maybe it should post after one hour time, after two hours time. You can change it here. But I can also decide to leave it automatic. 
to immediately finish it to post. Now the location, you can decide to set your location. Then choose your location. But you don't need this, so you just cancel it. And then the search description. So when a user searches on the website, what should be displayed? So for instance, when you want this page to be displayed on the website, I mean on the search results, what do you want the user to input? Or what should be the search description of this page? So you enter that here as well. And then you want to allow users to comment, so you allow. And then you add the search description. And let's say online courses. And then you can go ahead and publish. And let's see how it will appear on the site. So you can click on read more. And then you can decide to share it. So you can get the link. You can just copy the link from the top here, the same link. Then show on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and email. You can just copy the link and share wherever else you want to share it. Because this is the page, and then you can decide to comment. And I have to comment with Google account name or URL. And then, what is it? And then, after writing your comments, you publish. Let's check the site map. Let's enter the site map again. I have to open the site map. This is basically the site map. It has the URLs in the site, basically. That is what it is. It just contains the URLs in the site. So let's go to the site map and then add a new one. So now you see it has discovered one URL. So the first time with the error, it means so because we didn't have any page. So now because you have one page, so you see it has discovered one URL. However, the fact that it has discovered the URL does not mean that URL has been indexed. Index means it should be displayed on the search results. A right has been submitted all right, but it doesn't mean it has been indexed. So you can come to URL inspection. That is if you know the URL, or you can just copy the URL from here. You can remove this, you end up the .html. Then you copy it and then come and paste for inspection. To get more information about that URL. Okay, so you see the URL is not on Google. Even though it has been submitted in a sitemap, but it is not on Google. So what you can do is you can request for it to be indexed. So you click on request indexing and then we will be testing if live URL can be indexed. Now there's no referring page, there's no page referring it, then it has not yet been crawled. So whilst I was waiting for them to be testing it. You can go ahead and continue with other things. So with the settings, we saw uh, Google Analytics. So you can add that one as well. So if you have a Google Analytics, you can just add the analytics property ID here. So in the next lecture, I'm going to create a Google Analytics ID. 
So let's see if that finish testing. Okay, it is still testing. So let's wait for a few seconds. So it is still testing. Because this is what you do when after indexing, I mean after maybe creating a post or whatever. You can come and you can copy the link and then paste it at the top. You can just come and click on the URL inspection. And then you paste the URL there and then you will enter. You click on the I mean you press the enter key and then it will load and then you see whether the URL is on Google or not. So for now you see URL is not on Google. So you can just click on the request indexing and then to index the page. That why doesn't mean after clicking request indexing the page will automatically be indexed. No, it will take some time. It depends on certain factors. And so now come and click on the coverage to see how many pages have been found on your site. How many posts have been found, how many have been indexed and how many have not been indexed. And then you also see the reasons why they have not been indexed. So let's wait for this to finish testing and then we we'll see that. Yeah, so after it is indexed, you see submitting request and then you see indexing requested. So the URL was added to a priority call to our submitting is a, our submitting is multiple times it will not change its queue position or priority. So you just click on what it. So you see indexing requested. So that is it. So after some time, I come and check. You can. Inspect the URL again and see that it is on Google. That was what I was talking about in the coverage. So this is where you see the number of posts you have. Yeah, the details are down here. See the number of posts you have and then how many have been indexed and how many have not been indexed and then the errors and the rest where you can change them. But but for now it has to take some time before the data process. We just created this and also the set map, you don't have to be Submitting set maps anytime you create a new post. The set map is detected automatically. However, if you want to submit it again, you can submit it. It doesn't change anything. So that is it for this lecture. I'll see you in the next lecture. Bye. So welcome back to this lecture. So you can go and search for Google Analytics. So you can search for Google Analytics or go to analytics.google.com and the same. So that's what I'm going to do in this lecture. So I can get the Google Analytics property ID. Basically, it gives you more information than the statistics of the website. For the statistics of the website, you can see the number of views you have gotten. If for instance, they said today I'm getting 17 views, and then overall we have only 19. Now we did post, we have gotten only one view from this post and that's the one I just viewed. And now with the contact us, we have one, but as one. And then this post also has one view. However, the website has got 19 views. Because anytime I make a change, I come and reload the page. You can change it so that your own will not be added. So you can click on manage tracking your own page views. So that's so all these views, the 19 are the ones I just did. That is after updating any setting and then I just reload the page. So these are the views. So in order not to confuse you, you can decide to manage your own page views so that you can cancel your own so that the views so that the views will not be counted. So you say don't track the views for this blog. So your pages from this browser will not be counted for this blog. So that is it. However, with the Google Analytics, it gives you more information than this. For instance, here you can go to more about this blog. You can get the location of the people visiting your blog. So here you also get the referrals. That is, if you have shared a link to the blog on maybe Facebook or another site it will be shown here so you see how many referrals you have gotten from facebook that's how many views 
people are converting from Facebook, it will be shown here as well as the other sites. And then the top referring URLs, so the URL of the site that was referred, it will still be shown here. And then the audience, the browser they are using will also be shown here. Then the operating system will also be shown. And then the, if they search for your site, and then the keyword they use to search for your site will also be shown here. And then their top location will also be shown. So that is it. So now if you get more information there, you have to get more on Google Analytics. So that is it here, the analytics. That's where we are coming to. So that one also you log in, or because you have already logged in to Blogger, it will just move with that same account to the Google Analytics. Now I would have a Google Analytics account, so I'm going to change the account. Okay, so after logging into your Google Analytics account, you go ahead and click on the admin. You click on the admin, then you can decide to create an account. And then you can give the account a name. You can just give it any name. And then you can create up to a maximum of 99 accounts. Okay, the maximum is 100. So I have access to 99 accounts. So it means I can now create 99 more accounts. The maximum is 100. So you just give it any name. You can change the name later. And then you can have to select this. And then we go to next. So now property setup. What should, what should be the name of the property? I do the same name as the site. So you can just copy this. And then it must have a maximum of hundred characters, and then. A minimum of four and then you choose your reporting time zone let me just use this radar you can decide to leave it also then you can decide to choose the currency or you can leave it like that and then we'll show advanced options Okay, at first, when you choose ad show advanced options, you can choose the Universal Google Analytics property. So you see, you can create both analytics for property and then a universal property. But if you choose create universal property only, it only give you the universal property only. But you can create both. So you create both a Google Analytics for property and universal analytics property. However, you can read the information at the top here. You see that the Universal Analytics will no longer process new data. So, starting from July 1st, you will not be able to use the Universal Analytics property. So, if you have only chosen creating Universal Analytics property, it means maybe you have to delete it or change it. So, you have to choose both Analytics 4 and Universal property. So, in case the Universal one is no longer working, you still have the Analytics 4. You can still go with that one. So, you can just enter your website URL. You can just copy a URL of the website and then you paste it here. However, the HTTP is already there. So you can just remove it. And then select next. And so you select your industry. That is your website. What industry is it about? So maybe your online communities, jobs and education, and then select the business size. How many employees do you have? And then how do you intend to use Google Analytics with your business? So you take what I apply. Maybe measure customer engagement with your site or app, optimize it, measure data, optimize advertising costs. Yeah, but we are not advertising anything, so you but I still decide to check it. So order if order then name it here then you can create
you can accept and then click on I accept. But I have to scroll down. So, the first thing I said, we have to scroll down also. So, that's the first one. There's the second one down here. So, you have to accept this one also before you can click on the I accept. And then that is it. So, now it is loading. And also, as I was saying earlier, you can create a maximum of 100 accounts. Now, after creating one account, you can Add more pro the properties are basically the website, so you can add more websites as you want. So you can click create a new property. That is, if I've created another blog, you can also add that one as well. So this is the stream details. So that is the stream. That is the, the blog. And then that's the blog's URL. You can, you can go through the tour later. So this means they have not yet detected any analytics code on your blog. So it means you have, you have to make sure they are set up correctly. However, you have not yet entered any analytics code, so you can leave that for now. And this is the string name, the string URL. This is the measurement ID. So now this is what you can do. You can yeah, and then you copy this code and then you paste it in the HTML head in the page you want to use for the analytics. So for instance, just as I showed you earlier, you can go to using your blog. You can go to the theme. That's where you have the HTML element. And then you scroll and then you look at edit HTML. So basically this is where the head tag starts so you can paste it beneath the head tag so you can copy that i've not just copied it so you can just copy it here and then you paste it here sometimes it doesn't allow pasting into the into the html tag directly i mean the customize directly so you have to go to the layout and then you and then gadget you select add html so basically this this header is contained in the head tag as well because that is where you have the title of the page so you can place it above so after creating the gadget you can place it above the header in your html javascript and then select it and then you can come to the google analytics and then copy this that is if you want to capture the analytics for all the pages on the site or if you want to capture for a specific page you just paste this in the HTML elements of that specific page so here we have the id the id is routine r6 so you see the measurement id is the same as the one here so that is the one you have to paste so that is it If you already have an existing one, then you can go through this or Google Tag Manager. You can use this, but I don't have any existing one, I'm just adding a new one. So you can just click it to copy it. Now it has been copied, so you can just apply it. Now you can go through this connected search tags and the rest. So now you can close the web streams. So after copying it, 
yeah in the title and then this is where you paste it after copying it you paste it here this is where you paste it and then you give it a title you can decide not to give it any title just save it and then because you want it to be at the header so you place it even before the title of the page and then you can save it yeah but with the previous so this is the analytics for about with the universal analytics that's in the previous one you can come here let's go back and then so this is the universal analytics so that is this is the code here well let's see let's view settings so let's see if you copy view So basically you can just click on property settings that is after coming to the property so basically these are the properties the ge4 and then that's the google analytics 4 and this is the previous one the older version that's the universal analytics so you can copy and then you select property settings and then here that is the tracking id so you copy just this starting from the ua and then with the one then we come to the settings the way you see Google Analytics property ID, you can just paste it there, and then you save. So it has been updated. So that is it. So now, after a user visits the site, you can come and check on it on the analytics. So we are going to try one just now. So let's go to the home. Okay, so after placing the analytics ID, you can just click on the home here you can click here to show the full okay so that is it this is the home so you click on it and now this is the home. it will be showing you how many users and then the sessions and then on the right side you can see the live okay it has come down the active users in the last five minutes so now let's go and visit the page right now and then we see that this will change so let's just uh, click read more. And then we'll come to the analytics. Let's go back. basically here you see how users are interacting with your site so this is where you get all the information so that is it for this lecture bye welcome to this section in this section i will show you how to monetize the website you have created so we have to start monetizing the website you can go to the earnings section on the left side to click on earnings so blogger allows you to monetize your website with adsense so as long as you don't have an adsense account you can click click here to create an account or even if you already have an account you can still create the adsense account and then you log in so let's just click on create adsense account So this is where you sign up to AdSense. So you give the name of your website. It should get after clicking on the create AdSense account. It should get your Google account. So you can click here to see whether it is that account. If it is not that account, for instance, if you want to use this account for the AdSense, you can click on sign out, and then you log into the account you want to use for the AdSense. 
But assuming once you use this account, so after it has finished logging us in, we'll just enter the name of the website and then we continue with these steps. So you have entered the name of the website. That's what we don't got in the website. So that is the website here. But if you don't have a website, you can click, I don't have a site. But because you clicked from this site, so automatically they are assuming this is your site. So you cannot click, I don't have a site. And then you can decide to get more out of AdSense. So, so that the same will customize help and performance and users. Or if you don't want, you can also choose so that you're not sent. However, sometimes it helps so that you can get more information. You can click yes, send me customized help and performance suggestions. And then here you select your country. And you can read the attempts and connect. And then after reading everything, then you click on I have read and accept the terms. And you can click on start using AdSense. Okay, so this is the home page of the AdSense. You can dismiss this information. However, right, if your website talks about this, then they might post monetization of your site. But that's not what our website is about, so you can just dismiss it. And then here for the payment, you have to give some information and then you explore how the ads will look like on your site and then you can connect your site to AdSense. So let's go with the first one. So enter the information. So this is your personal information. Let me see here, you choose the account type, whether it is an individual or a business account. And then you give your name and then your address, your city and then the phone number which is optional. And then after that, you click on the submit button. So after submitting your personal information, you can come and see how the ads will look like on your site. So you can click on the explore. However, uh, that one is optional. You can say not to explore it, but let's explore it to see how it will be. So basically on the left side this is where you configure the ads and then i mean on the right side and then on the left side you see how the ads will look like so for instance here you have the mobile page so assuming you are viewing the website on the, the mobile phone so you see the ad will be at the top here and then there's another ad here so basically you are having only two ads and then when you view on a laptop or on a desktop you can click here to view down Okay, so we have an ad at the bottom here. We have another ad here. Okay, so that one also we have two ads. So we have one come and change the ad settings. We are, we are having auto ads. So Google will automatically show ads across your site and all the best places for you. And I can decide to change that and then you will use your own ads. So here we have ad formats in page ads. I've accepted that one and anchor ads and then it else. So let's cancel the auto ads and then let's go to the ad format. Okay, so we have to include the auto ads and then optimize your existing ad units. So you can decide to choose which ads you want and which ones you don't want. After that, you click on apply to site, but you can view how it is before. So we have only two ads here, and then on the desktop also, we have only two ads. So you can click on apply to site, or you can also check the privacy messages. So you can decide to ask the users whether they accept this, so you can get to show a message. You have to add your site's privacy policy. So after creating a page for your privacy policy, for instance, we have one here, pages. Okay, you have a privacy policy yet. So after creating one, you can just copy the link and then paste the link here. 
but we are not adding that so we can just add the ads to our site we can set to apply now or we can set to run experiment first then we save it and also now we are going to connect the site to AdSense we can click on let's go So you can request for review. If you think there's a problem here, let me refresh the page and then. Okay, so actually this is what you are supposed to see. So you have to enter the URL of the website and then you can click on save and continue. So just copy the URL for website and then paste it here and then click on save and continue. Okay, you have already added the site. The site was added automatically, so you can cancel this one. And then you have to request for review. So you can come to the site and then you click on request review. And that, that is it. It will take some time for them to accept your site. However, after creating the site you can automatically start showing AdSense ads. It will take some time, maybe about some three months or so, before you can start showing ads. So you can wait after three months before you apply to the AdSense, or you can also decide to apply immediately. If you are lucky, they might accept, and then if you are not lucky, you have to wait for some time and then you request for review again. So for now, they are getting the sites ready to show ads. And then it might take a few days or sometimes it might take up to two weeks and i'll be notified immediately they finish checking the site and then also you don't have to remove the site and then resubmit it because it might delay the process so in the meantime you can just place the codes on your site i'll show you how to do that also in the next lecture so that is it for this lecture see you in the next lecture welcome to this lecture in this lecture, we are going to set up the ads. You can also decide to add a subdomain. I will let's set up the ads. We have already viewed this. What I wanted to show you is that you can decide not to show ads on certain pages. You can come to page exclusions and then you can click on manage. And then here you click on the add exclusion to add it. So this is the URL of the website. In the website, however, if you already have a page on the website and then you don't want to include that or you don't want to show ads on that page, you can enter the URL of that page here. And then that is it. And then you click on the add and then also will not be shown on that page. So that is it. You can go back and then continue. So you go your earnings with auto ads. So Google show the right ads in all the best places for you and your audience. You can also see where your ads are placed before they go live, just like in the previous page. And then you can also get automatic updates. You can click on get started. So the auto ads are on. And then you can decide to see a report. However, the ads have not yet started showing. You can edit it. That is even to change something. You can just click on the edit to edit it. So this is when the ads are added by site. You can get by ad units, and then you can select the type of ad you want. However, you can decide to just use this one. Then it will be automatically added to your site. But if you want to do this manually, you can go to the ad units, and then you select which ad unit you want. And then let's select display ads. And then how you want it to be, whether square, horizontal, or vertical. So here to show you how the ad will look like. 
and then you can select whether fixed or responsive and then the responsive one they will adapt to the specific page layout whether mobile view or desktop view they will adapt to it however if you choose a fixed one then it will be fixed no matter on which device you view it so it's better to choose the responsive one and then you select whether you want it to be a square horizontal or vertical and then here at the top here you can give the name to that add unit so let's say add unit one and then let's create it so this is the code so you are copying the code and then you paste it between the body tags of your page you can just click here to copy the code so that the code has been copied now you have to paste this code in blogger you just come to blogger and then you go to the layout and then here you can just click anywhere add gadgets then you choose html or javascript then here the, where the content is then you paste it over there so that is it you don't need to include the title because if you add a title the title will be shown in the blogger so you just paste the content here and then receive it like can decide to remove it from the sidebar and bring it anywhere you can decide to add it to the ads section you can also decide to put it in the page body and then receive it however like i said they are still reviewing the site so the ads will not be shown for now and that is it you can click on done and you can also select global settings so in this case we are using by site that is google automatically place ads on the site so this is the auto ads you can click here to get the code for that so basically this is the code so you can just copy this code also and then you come to the blogger and then you follow the same step you can just click on add gadget and then you select html or javascript and where the content is you just paste the code there and that's an html code a javascript code you just paste it there and then you save it but however this code will also be pasted in the head tag as you can see from here the head tag of the site so in order to do that after creating the code this is it so you can look for the header this is the header basically this is where the head everything in the header is contained in the head tag so you can just paste that HTML code here okay so this code is the Google Analytics code you can just leave it and then that is it so with this one the ad should be placed on all the sites and if you choose by ad unit then it means you are selecting a specific ad unit for your site for your site and then you are pasting it on a specific page so for example after creating some posts or pages you want to share some specific ads to that pages you can just click here to create that ad copy the ad units and then edit the html content of that page and then paste the ad you can also go to the global settings and so you select your ad size and you can also let google optimize the size for your mobile ads so basically that is it and then after your site has been accepted that is it will take some time maybe about two weeks we'll come to the payment section and then we we'll see the payment info and then the rest and then i think you can withdraw only after you have gained at least 100 dollars before and then when you reach that amount you can verify you can click the verification check to verify and then withdraw the amount so 100 dollars is to the payment threshold so basically that, that is it and then this is your adsense publication id so if you need it you can just copy it from here and then you can also click to manage settings basically that's how you add adsense to your blogger so that is it for this section i'll see you in the next section welcome to this lecture in this lecture i'll show you how to advertise on the same diff as well i mean place ads on the same diff however with the same diff you cannot place ads if you are using the free version you have to upgrade before you can start showing ads 
and then also you can only show adsense ads so you can click on the google adsense and with that one you have to upgrade to the smart version then even if i'm using the pro version so you can also use that so in order to use google adsense on same day if you have to upgrade to the smart version and then you also get support from same day and then also you, your site will have to have uh, relevant and high quality content and also you also need to have a lot of visitors about 100 visitors a day and so if you have that then you can get the google adsense for your same deep site you can click about the smart upgrade and then about the pro upgrade to upgrade then you can also see the prices so basically these are the prices that is two dollars per month for the smart version then you can also check that of the pro okay with the pro you pay five dollars per month basically that is it and then in the previous lecture i showed you the google adsense id so that is the this is the place you publish it however that one you have to go to the pro version so that is it for this lecture see you in the next lecture okay, welcome back to this lecture in this lecture basically i, I want to tell you that you can add other ads not only AdSense, but ads from other sites to your blogger website. Usually what you only need is to copy the ads code and then you can click on add gadgets. And then you look for HTML or JavaScript. You just click on it and then after copying the code from that ad service, you just paste the code here and then you save. Some of the ad services usually they don't take that much time to verify your site. Immediately you paste the codes, the ads will start showing. However, I don't want to recommend any ad service to you. You can just do your own research and then you select the one you want. However, AdSense is the best, I will say. So that is it. You can also try other ad services. However, the AdSense is the best, so you can make your own choice. That is it for this lecture. See you in the next lecture. Okay, welcome back to this lecture. Now among same diff and blogger, I prefer blogger the most because with blogger, it allows you to add HTML elements, JavaScript and cascading style sheets as well. However, with the same diff, you only have the text editor. I mean, we only have the, yeah, the text editor, but you cannot include any HTML or any coding at all. However, the blogger, it gives you an option. If you have some little coding skills, you can apply it on the blogger. And also with the blogger, you can, get analytics for your site and also search engine optimization that is not to say i am saying don't use the same diff the same diff also has you know better good appearance but with the blogger also you can change the appearance but the same diff also gives you some nice graphics also compared to the blogger so that is it now you can start to create your blogs or your website without having any programming or coding skills however i will encourage you to learn some programming or coding so i'll be creating another course very soon teaching html javascript and css as well as some python and java also it's going to be for beginners so it doesn't matter if you don't have any programming knowledge about it it's also for beginners so you can try it out so you can just go ahead and start creating your website and blogs also there's another option wordpress however i don't want this particular course to be too long so i'm not going to include the wordpress however i'm creating another course which is fully about wordpress so that is it for this course see you in another course bye